I did finally watch Freerin. I know I talk or Freerin as uh, I talked about, I think last week or the week before on the podcast, I said I wanted to check out that anime. Uh, when I sat down to watch, there were six episodes available and I watched all six. I believe a seventh one is out now, but ooh, what a fantastic anime. Uh, I tried to describe it last time I talked about it. And it was, uh, well, now that I've seen it, I can give a better description. Just notice me, senpai. Notice <laughs> without me. spoilers. Um, it's a, like I said, it's a, this is from the first episode. It follows this girl who was a, in a party of four who took down a, a, a ancient evil to save the lands. And she's, uh, I don't know what she is, an elf. Let's say she's an elf. Um, and she lives much 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 longer than anybody else so for her a human's lifespan is like the blink of an eye it's like nothing so she was with two other humans the one guy was a dwarf but two other humans who uh, helped her on this journey to defeat this bad guy and now she's moved on in life and time has passed and they're all old except you know the the dwarf is older but not dwarves don't age as quickly as humans do. But so, uh, but the humans, yeah. So it goes from like this, these two younger guys on an adventure with her to two old men. And uh, we fired our friends. We hired old men <laughs> in the first episode. The, the one old guy passes away. That happens in the first episode. And it causes her to like, Fatality. Re oh, to really think about like, life and how she sees time and connections with people and because she's very like dismissive of relationships because she's like why bother like i'm going to be around forever like it, it, these are little insignificant moments in my life and uh it's 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 a very very interesting show it's quiet it's subdued it's very like like little bear it's got a little bear vibe mm. to it. Yeah. Uh, you're going to love it. I guarantee you're going to love it. Hi, William George. Friends, if you've never seen Little Bear, I mean, it's a kid's show, right? Arguably. But it's so peaceful and so lovely. And I, there have been a couple of times where Raw Meat and I have put it on like at night. And it's been like, yeah, Little Bear. It's little Bear's nice. great. Little Bear's great. But um, yes, it's got that quiet, like, soothing approach to mm -hmm. it so like serious topics are covered and there's a couple silly moments but as far as regular anime tropes go there's really i can think of one moment in the seven episodes i've watched i have like a really full-on anime moment and that's fine with me but it's like all of 15 seconds so if you're someone who doesn't like anime or doesn't like the tropish side of anime this would be no. for you it's very reflective and contemplative and i love it i couldn't love it enough it's an absolutely gorgeous looking anime too. And it's got a beautiful soundtrack from the first episode to the sixth. I teared up a whole bunch of times watching the show because of the topics and the nature of the story being told and the visuals and everything so all together. Is it sad or more like endearing? I mean, there's moments of sadness because like I said, these yeah. people go from her remembering them as young to them being old people and, uh but it's beautiful it's a mm -hmm. beautiful show and i'm talking about from a story perspective it's it's beautiful so mombre you absolutely need to watch it but there's my recommendation for you guys i watched it i loved it i'm i haven't had an anime that i've watched that made me feel like this since i was a teenager it's there there used to be a time in anime where things there were more anime out there that were a little bit more quiet and less tropish and just introspective and that's certainly still in the industry nowadays, but there's not something that has hit the mark for me like Freerin has. So if you got Crunchyroll, give it a watch. It's good stuff. Uh, I also checked out Scavenger, Scavenger's Reign, which is something I, uh, well, I wrote about most of this on Patreon. But Scaven Scavenger's Reign is the full animated series that's based on a short that came out, oh, I don't know, four or five years ago. And it was a short about uh, people marooned on this weird alien planet. And the short focused on the weird creatures and nature oh, yeah. of the planet. Well, the whole series, they didn't have plans to turn it into a series at the time. 
they got the green light for a series. So the first three episodes are on Max. It debuted just this week with the first three episodes. It is something else. Mom Brain, I think you'll also like that too, but it's like harsh. Mm -hmm. Like it's about these people being marooned on this planet and trying to get help. And they're living in a very harsh environment where everything is foreign to them. And so much doesn't make sense. And there's so many creatures that operate in ways you wouldn't expect. And just it's it's a wild, wild show. But um, it's very tense because everything and anything could be out to get them. And you don't know what's going to happen to these characters. And it follows. There is a duo, a guy and a girl who are together. There's another girl who's with a robot. And then there's a guy who's on his own. And all of them come from the same ship, but they cr their pods crash landed on different parts of the planet. So they don't know that each other are alive. All they know is, you know, the guy and the girl are together and they're just trying to get back to the ship. The one guy on his own, I don't even want to say anything because he's going through a hell of a journey. And then there's the one girl who set up like a base camp with this robot that works with her. And obviously all of them, there's a unifying moment that they all want to get to a specific point. But again, they don't know each other exists. So it's about them trying to make it through this environment. It's a wild show, but it's so good. Um, it's mature because there's no no sexual content or anything, but it, it's pretty brutal. So um, it's harsh. Really oh, yes, Josh, a robot. Maybe you know this robot or maybe you like this show because of the robot. I don't know. No, not at all. Okay, good to know. The star of the show. But uh, you go. Oh, oh, I get it. Oh, you are the only robot there is. Um, yeah. go on YouTube and type in Scavengers Rain. You can check out a trailer and see if it's for you. But is it rain like the weather or rain? R E I G N. Got it. So no, they're rain. Mm. You never know. Not the t not the weather. Yes. Not like chocolate rain. No, mm. not yet. Anyway. Uh, so yeah, go check it out. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. First three episodes on Max. Um, I also watched. Fully Cooly Shoegaze, which was only three episodes. It's a mini series, so three and done. Amazing. Amazing. The best Fully Cooly since the original Fully Cooly. Still, the original is better. But as I said, Shoegaze was a continuation of Alternative. So some of the characters from Alternative return in, sh in Shoegaze. But there's brand new characters, too. It takes all the core things that are important in Fully Cooly. And it builds on them and it does its own thing as well. But it's got the vibe. It's got the story beats that I'm looking for. It's got the feeling. It's got the attention to detail. It's And it does things new for Fooly Cooly. This doesn't retread ground. It might uh, play with familiar ideas or tones. But it also does all new stuff that is told in a way and fits in in a way that goes perfectly with the the style of Fooly Cooly. Like Fooly Cooly is about growing up and exploring who you are and finding out what makes you tick and finding your way in this world and feeling out of place, but finding a place. Oh, it does such a good job. I'm getting goosebumps talking about it. When this one comes out physically, as the last two did, I will 100% be buying this. So um, I, I don't think I could have been happier because I loved Alternative. Like I really, really loved Alternative. But Shoegaze takes it up a notch. So, so happy with that. Just sad that now the two Fooly uh, Cooly spinoffs are over. Um, I liked Grunge. I didn't love it, but I liked it. I liked Alternative a lot. Uh, I didn't like Progressive. And I absolutely love Shoegaze. So it's more hits than misses for wow, me. I am impressed. Um, and then one more thing in far, as far as shows go, and then we'll get the news. Speaking of misses... Fall of the House of Usher. Fall of the House of Usher, yes. Um, I believe my bread is done. Okay. I'll be right back. Uh, yeah, Red Souza. Uh, I've always been an anime fan, but I made that. Yeah, I think I wrote about it on Patreon a while ago that I was making a concerted effort to like up my cadence of anime. And I'm so happy I did because I love it. I, again, I love anime so much. And um, this wasn't. Uh, I wasn't watching as much only because of my busy schedule, but I forced myself to find time for it. And I'm very glad I did. Also, just to point this out, Scavenger's Reign is not uh, anime. It's just uh, it's done by Titmouse. So a lot of Adult Swim uh, stuff that you see is done by them. But anyway, Fall of the House of Usher. This is a live action show. 
This is done by Mike Flanagan, the guy who did uh, Haunting of Hill House or whatever it was, and uh, Midnight Mass and those shows on Netflix. And I really liked his stuff. So that's why I was excited for Fall of the House of Usher. It was uh, like a, a unique take on some uh, Edgar Allan Poe stuff, but in a modern day setting, modern sensibilities. And just uh, it, it's basically it, it was Edgar Allan Poe uh, influenced. But that's, you know, like little Easter eggs. And there's a couple like important points from Edgar Allan Poe that play into the show. But you could not know anything about Edgar Allan Poe or care about him. And still uh, like watch the show and not be lost. But sadly, the show was a real bummer for me. I thought it was very bad. Dialogue was really bad. Writing was bad. Episodes felt really long. Like they, the pacing was rough. I'm it so dragged sad on not for here, me because he liked it, right? He really liked it. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot actually while we're playing and Fortnite. It seems like something I would like. So now. Watch watch oh, yeah. the first couple of episodes and see what you think. Yeah, yeah I, whenever I talk about anything, don't let me be the uh, arbiter of what you should or shouldn't watch or play. Just take my opinion as you will. But yeah, still give things a shot for yourself. When I hear people don't like things or hate things or whatever, I still give them a shot because I'm interested in finding out for myself. But yeah, Fall of the House of Usher just did not do it for me. I uh, it was very disappointed. Some of the writing feels so low quality and embarrassing i don't i know mike I, flanagan is uh there's a few people out there who feel it's not an it's not a sentiment that isn't out there that mike flanagan has some um uh, uh what's the word why am i i'm blanking his dialogue can be rough and his uh he's got some uh what's uh you know somebody talks for a long time monologue yeah he has some monologues that are rough and that's the case here, except with this other stuff, I, there may have been a monologue or two where I'm like, all right, this is going on a little too long or something like that. But here there's monologues that are very, very just poorly executed. They're like, uh, it's stuff like a high schooler would write and be like, this is really deep. And that's fine for a high schooler, but that's not what I'm looking for from a show like this. It's just... It's just, I don't know. I, it really didn't do it for me. The first four episodes, honest to God, were a struggle for me. And I'm never on my phone and I'm never doing something else. I'm always just focused completely on a show when I'm watching it. So I gave it my full attention, but it was very hard to get through. And then the, there's four more episodes and they were better, but they weren't good. But they were better from what came before it. At the end of the show, I was like, this was just a cheesy oddly paced mess so i'm very disappointed because i really liked his stuff and i won't not watch his next thing but i'll be very trepidatious with it because this really threw me for a loop it was rough really really bad if i watch this on my own i would never recommend it to anybody i wouldn't tell them you should watch it i wouldn't even say like ah give it a shot i just probably wouldn't talk about it if somebody brought it up i'd share my thoughts but other than that i'd be like nope i'll keep this one to myself